when you think about it, there are only five real questions to ask yourself when choosing a martial arts school. That's number one, can I afford it? Number two, can I meet the attendance requirements? Number three, do I feel comfortable there with the environment, teachers, and students? Number four, is it teaching something I want to know? And number five, do the rank requirements sound okay to me? Number one, can I afford it? Can you afford it in terms of financial cost, which is the main thing, but also in terms of cost of your time, your health, and your effort? Because if you got to get too broken up physically to get a black belt at that school, it's not worth it. If you feel like you got to take out a loan to be able to afford the training that they're offering, it's not worth it. If you feel like you just can't afford to spend that kind of time there, it's not worth it. It's not for you. And I don't care who it's taught by. I don't care if it's taught by the reincarnation of Bruce Lee. If you can't afford it, if you have to sacrifice other bills for it, you can't afford it. And that's, I'm going to segue into this thing a little bit, and that even includes contracts. Don't be upset about signing a contract if you can afford it, because you can afford it. And don't sign a contract if you can't afford it, because you can't afford it. And number two, can I meet the attendance requirements? Some schools want you to come five, six, seven days a week. Other schools and clubs only want you to come two or three times a week. The classes I teach, although I'd like for you to sign up for both of the classes I'm teaching right now, I really only expect you to come to the one that you signed up for. That's a reasonable expectation for me. Just come to that class, practice outside of class. If you know when you first sign up that you may have trouble meeting the attendance requirements, don't sign up. Because in the long run, you're not going to come often enough. You're not going to progress at the rate that you would like to. And it's going to slow you down and you're going to be resentful. Teachers are going to be frustrated with you. It's a bad thing all the way around. And speaking of this, when I was going for judo, I knew that they told me, oh, you only want to come like once a week or whatever. You're just going to take you maybe 10 years to get a black belt if you're not competing. And you know what? I didn't care because I had to raise my family at the time and I could meet those attendance requirements. I knew if I didn't come as often, I wouldn't progress as fast. But you know what? I decided to enjoy the journey. And eventually I did get a showdown in that. So moving on. Number three, do I feel comfortable there with the environment, teachers, and students? Teachers and students go without saying, if you don't feel comfortable with the teacher, you don't feel comfortable with the students, you're not going to feel comfortable. You're not going to want to come anyway. And if you're feeling bad vibes or you just something's not right for you from day one, don't go there. The only exception I say to make are parents. If your child starts telling you they don't want to attend a class anymore because they feel like <laughs> it's too hard. No. If it's too hard because they have standards, that's fine. If it's too hard because they're breaking your child's ribs, that's different. And part of feeling comfortable at a martial arts club or school is the environment. The environment inside the place. If it's too clean for you, because some people want something that looks a little more, you know, a little Spartan, so they can get that real, you know, gritty martial arts feel, and it looks more like a health club, in a place where warriors are made, it's not for you. Consequently, if you don't like dirt and it's dirty, you want something that looks a little more like a health club. Heck, you may want it to be in a health club so that you can go lift weights before or after. Or get on a treadmill before or after class or take a swim. So look at that. And if the environment's not right for you, don't sign up there. And that also includes how you feel safety-wise. If you think you're going to get mugged coming out of class, you don't need to be there. If you think you're going to be profiled by the police while you're trying to find a parking spot to go to class, you don't need to be there either. Number four is the teaching something I want to know. If you want to sign up to be the next cage fighter and they're not teaching cage fighting, you don't need to be there. If you like the whole forms, which a lot of people think are nothing but nonsense fancy dance, and you like the uniforms and the bowing and the speaking funny words and funny languages, that's something you want to know. You should be there. 
If you want to learn weapons, you want to learn how to use a sword, they don't teach the sword, just like I don't teach the sword. It's not for you. You shouldn't be there. Now, what you could do is if you like everything else but like this one thing, then you could train there and then go to another instructor to get the other thing that you know, that you want to learn, and that will be working out for you. But, you know, if you took a karate class and then you start realizing after a while that you really want to learn jujitsu or you're mad because your judo teacher is not teaching you how to box, you know, it's, it's all kinds of things that where people do to themselves. I mean, like I wouldn't sign up for a uh, Krav Maga class and expect to learn spinning back kicks. So if it's not teaching something you want to know and it's really, really important for you to learn that thing, it's not the place for you. And number five, do the rank requirements sound okay to me? Or do you? If they tell you it takes 10 years to get a black belt, if that sounds like that's too long, that's not the place for you. If they tell you you can get a black belt in a year or two years, and that sounds too quick, that's not the place for you. Because see, these ranks mean different things in different places for different styles. Some places, like uh, the black belt I give out is probably like a second or third degree at some other places. Because even though I'm on my own in my own style, the, the example that's been set for me is a black belt is a teacher. Now at other schools, a black belt is not a teacher. A black belt just means serious student. And now you're ready to really get started. Of course, we all say that. But at some places... Like, black belt really actually does just mean you know the basics. But see, for me, a blue belt means you know the basics. But that's at my school. That's at my thing that I'm doing. And, you know, I, it takes people probably, even though one guy had got it technically under me less than that, probably takes you about five, six years if you're an adult. A kid, not before the age of 13, but they probably started at six or seven, so it may take five, six, seven, eight years. That's the pending. But see... That's me. That's where I'm at. And I go on to the assumption that you're only coming once a week. And if that's too long for you, that would mean that I'm not for you. And this is another thing that I'm going to end this video. And I've said this online. If you wake up and you realize that, oh my goodness, I'm actually in a McDojo. They're just kind of handing me this rank. But you can afford it. See, number one, stay there. Get the black belt, at least because there's two, there are two huge rank problems in the martial arts. People either take too long to promote you or they promote you too short. Everybody wants to harp up and down on the too short thing. That's what we say. Oh, he didn't earn that black belt. But let me tell you something. There's another nightmare. Where you can be training for 15, 20 years and you still not a black belt. And you really want to be a black belt. And they just won't promote you. If you've been there 10, 15, 20 years and you're not a black belt. Unless you know honestly that uh, you've been sloughing off, you've been inconsistent with your attendance and practicing, and well, not practicing and stuff like that. If it's taking you that long, you may be strung along for a financial ride. So, those are the five real questions to ask yourself when choosing a martial arts school. Nothing else matters. Affiliation doesn't, really doesn't matter. Lineage, none of that stuff is important. None of that stuff. You know, the fame or lack thereof of the teacher, none of that's important. Just think about these things. Can I afford it? Can I meet the attendance requirements? Do I feel comfortable there, environment teacher, students? Is the teacher something I want to know? And do the rank requirements sound okay to me? Do you care if little kids get black belts? If you care and they promote kids black belts and you think that's wrong, that's not school for you. If you don't think it's fair that a child can't get a black belt at school, but they don't handle child black belts. And that's not school for you. So think about these five. Again, none of the other stuff matters. Peace.